music is my life. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. What's going on, everybody? This is Strangeland Oddities at Days of the Dead in Atlanta, Georgia. This is in February 2nd through the 4th. We are with one of the icons in the industry, Mr. Bill Mosley. How are you today? Uh, I'm pretty good for an icon. <laughs> it's kind of chilly and wet outside, so I'm glad I'm inside. I'm dry and warm and surrounded by horror fans and uh, feeling good. Now, obviously, this isn't your first Days of the Dead, so... They're doing something to keep coming back here. Well, they keep buying me a plane ticket and a, and a hotel room. <laughs> that helps, and they give me a table. Um, yeah, I've been working with Days of the Dead since their inception. Um, as it turns out, uh, one of the uh, founders of Days of the Dead, Bill Philpott, is also my convention manager. Oh. So I have a special in. A special so, bond. A special bond. <laughs> so they, they do keep bringing me back, which is great. Oh, nice. Yeah. So when you first started off in the Texas Chainsaw Part 2 with Chop Top, did you think that Chop Top was going to become such an iconic figure for that movie? I had no idea. I, you know, I, I was new to the business. I didn't even know. You know, I mean, I guess if you talked to me about icons, it would have been certainly... Frankenstein and Dracula, the Wolfman, the Mummy, stuff like that. Uh, you know, it never really even occurred to me that things would evolve as they did. For instance, on the last day of shooting, when we were a wrap, um, I was in my trailer, you know, getting dressed or, you know, getting some makeup off or whatever. And there was a little knock on the door, and I opened the door, and it was uh, Toby Hooper's then-wife, Karen, who was also the, uh, the costume person on Chainsaw 2. And she had a cardboard box, and in it was my whole Chop Top costume. You know, there are, you know, the blue jeans, the tie-dyed shirt, the vest, buttons, necklaces, sneakers. And she said, here, this is for you. And I looked at it, I said, you know, I would never wear any of this. <laughs> so I turned it down. <laughs> Not knowing that, you know, in the near future there would be this thing called eBay and yeah, all this stuff would be worth like a million dollars. I know, right? It's like you wish you had kept those little sentimental yeah. things when yeah. you first well, started as it shooting. Turned out, as it turned out, you know, years later, um, a, uh, the guy who was the set photographer on Chainsaw 2, who remained a friend of Toby Hooper's, um, gave me that costume. He had taken possession of it and um, just out of the kindness of his heart, I guess, uh, gave me the costume. So I do have that. And in fact, if you see, see like the, the middle action figure right there, you can grab that. Yeah. Yeah, there was this, uh, yeah, there's a company called NECA and they were putting out a chop top action figure. And so, um, the nice thing about it was that I, you know, having had having the costume, I was able to uh, take pictures of it, and all the little details on this are pretty accurate, and was able to send it to them, and they incorporated that in the Chop Top action figure. Huh. The yeah. only difference I see in that is he's a little bit more heavier set than you. Yeah. Yeah. They never do quite get it right. <laughs> they just don't get it right. But uh, you know, that's that showbiz. Right. And. You said that you were just starting off in your career now to transform into Chop Top. How, as far as preparation, in your mind, were you thinking, how am I going to do this? You know, I was, I was, I was overwhelmed because I'd never really done a big movie job before. In fact, I'd only been in bit parts in two other feature films. And... Um, what I did was uh, a couple of things happened. First of all, uh, Chop Top is so much based on Ed Neal's Hitchhiker from the original Chainsaw. So I give him 98% of the inspiration for Chop Top. And uh, the energy and just everything about Chop Top is really 
basically inspired by, copied from Ed Neal. Uh, the other thing that happened was, uh, in my family, uh, the men uh, go bald around, yeah, 25 to 30. Right. And uh, so I was, you know, I, I, for some reason, as a, you know, a younger man, I was afraid of that happening. And um, with, in order to put the plate on my head and, and make uh, the prosthetics work, um, Tom Savini wanted, uh, who was uh, our, you know, uh, special effects makeup One of the person. legends. Yes, one of the legends. The king of splatter uh, <laughs> required that I shave my head for Chop Top. And, uh, and they actually paid me to do it, which is even better. Um, so uh, they shaved my head, and, and once my head was shaved, for some reason that also blew my mind just because you know from worrying about you know will I lose my hair to you know having no hair at all uh, was very liberating and so that also opened up some energy that fed into Chop Top. Um, you know it was just uh, it was and also you know what really helped was uh, that uh, Toby Hooper loved what I was doing as Chop Top so that that was very exciting to have someone to kind of please and someone who was encouraging. And also, an uh, there was a director as well. <laughs> amazing director. And there was, also, uh, there was only about, you know, three quarters of the script was written. So that left a lot of room for improvisation. And uh, Toby really encouraged that. And once I was into Chop Top, like, I was coming up with a lot of things that Toby liked and uh, kept in the movie. So it was a very, you know, it was a very open and freewheeling uh, job. And uh, I just really, you know, was un I, I couldn't believe how much fun it was. And I couldn't believe how much money I was making relative to the money I had made as a freelance writer in New York City, right. which wasn't as much by any stretch. So. Uh, you know, it was kind of like, uh, for me, it was like being, it was like running away to join the circus and, and, and them letting you stay, you know, <laughs> like, nice. yeah, come on, sure. Yeah, it was definitely a shame. I mean, it seems like all the, the big horror directors are, you know, departing ways, you yeah. know, Toby, George Romero and stuff like that. Yeah, Wes Craven. Wes Craven, yeah. which is a shame. Um, so... You know, when you came out of Chop Top, obviously you've done movies in between, which, uh, you know, a lot of people that are just diehard Texas Chainsaw fans or diehard Rob Zombie fans, they just see you as, you know, Chop Top or Otis. Right. Um, which they need to actually check out some more of your movies because it's, you know, these don't just represent you as a person. You have a whole career and, you know, that people, a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. And I think more people that are obsessed with just like just Texas or just Freddy Krueger you know stuff like that they need to be more open and actually you know look at your you know um, my profile. I, I call it my bodies of work. Your bodies of work. <laughs> yeah, right. um, I just saw the one that you were just a priest, and um, that was yeah. an amazing movie. The possession experiment. Yeah, the possession experiment. That, that was. That, yeah, that was fun. And um, it's fun for, getting raped by uh, you know a, a possessed woman. I mean, that's. <laughs> I, 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 spoiler alert. <laughs> Pos it was, it was, raped. It was so funny because I'm I'm a priest performing an exorcism and and the uh, subject like you know gets all crazy and full of the devil and and uh, kills everybody in the in the little exorcism room and then comes after me and 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 rapes the priest which is uh, you know a first for me um, <laughs> and uh, and then she's supposed to lean down and and bite my neck and uh, and they. You know, God bless the, the filmmakers, they, they did it, uh, you know, with a, a two shot. So they did it kind of, you know, 10 feet away from, you know, this girl, like, biting my neck. And, uh, and I said, are you going to uh, cover that? And they said, no, not, not necessarily. And I said, well, why don't you get in there for a close up? And, and uh, they said, really? And I said, yeah, come on. I mean, they were being respectful, and it was very nice. But right. and I said, yeah, you know, and, and in fact, because we had just finished lunch, and there was some uh, chicken for lunch, and I said, yeah, like, let's put some chicken on my neck, and then she can, like, 
bite my neck and, and like, you know, with some blood and, and some chicken, you know, it looks like she's taken a bite out of my neck. So we did that. And, you know, so that, you know, that's the kind of, that's the kind of fun I have <laughs> making, making horror movies. Like, come on, let's go for it. Yeah, I've yeah. noticed when I talk to a, a lot of actors that have done TV and that have done movies where they say that with television, you have to, it's like spit, 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 spit. Yeah. You really don't have any creativity. <clears throat> um, I remember talking to Sid Haig and he was telling me he was doing a TV <clears throat> shot and he did the very next same role, but as a Western, <clears throat> but the same role. He said there's no creativity where with movies, you can kind of improvise and kind of make the actual character, you know, that's why the movies stick out. That's why, you know, your characters have st stuck out is because of how you improvised and right. made the character where TV, they make the character for you and yes. you, you have to follow yes. those rules. Yes, and I, you know, and it's funny, I just don't really do as well with TV. Um, you know, I've had some fun, like, guest starring roles on different shows, but, um, you know, that's just not, uh, that's, the movie is definitely more my, uh, my happy place. Because uh, I do like to collaborate, right. you know, as opposed to, like, yeah, do this, and can you look over here, can you, can you smile bigger, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh-oh, here, uh, comes, here we, comes my... We got a big guy coming in here. Are you busy? <laughs> You're not doing anything, are you? This is Kane Hart, everybody. We have an interview with him later. You smell like Listerine, man. Are you trying to that's mask? Are you right. trying to mask all that uh, that tequila breath? <laughs> so, yeah. So I do I do better with movies. I, I enjoy the collaboration, you know, helping to create a character, and you know that that's the kind of stuff I like to do. So. And uh, we're going to do a little fun fact here, which you know a lot of uh, Bruce Campbell fans out there, I don't know if you've known that, uh, but Bill was actually in Army of Darkness. And can you clarify who you actually were? Because there's different people that say that you were the evil Ash. Yes, I am not evil Ash. That's Bruce Campbell. Uh, he's the one that kept putting his jaw back in place. I am the new captain of the Army of the Dead. Because uh, the first the first time that uh, the Army of the Dead tries to take the castle, they are rebuffed, and uh, Evil Ash is upset with his general or his captain. So he lops his head off, and he appoints me as the new captain of the Army of the Dead. Bruce Campbell, uh, Evil Ash is on a black horse. I'm on a white horse. Uh, he's got a higher hat than I do. Mine has horns. I have an eye patch as well as a sclera lens over the other eye. So that's the big difference. And, uh, you know, it was a real joy to be, uh, you know, working with uh, 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 Sam Raimi and uh, Bruce, of course. I mean, Sam Raimi is hilarious. Really, one of the funniest guys I've ever met. I don't know if he's still funny, you know. <laughs> Life can, you know, pound you down, but uh, then he was hilarious. So. Yeah, we just did a couple of uh, uh, Bruce Campbell things. He was at the Walker Stalker right. Atlanta, and then he did his uh, book signing and his uh, last fan standing. Right. He's a pretty funny guy. Yeah, he is a funny guy. <laughs> but um, now let's go to your Rob Zombie film. Now, how did it go about as far as Rob Zombie coming up to you and say, hey, you are perfect to play Otis? And what were your thoughts when he asked you to play that role once you read the script? Well, he asked me to play the role. Uh, we met at a, um, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, an annual show called the Igor Awards, which is uh, an in-house horror award show put on by Universal Studios in California and Los Angeles. And I was asked to MC the show as Chop Top. So I dressed up and got made up as Chop Top and, and emceed this award show. And it turned out that Rob was one of the award recipients. And that was back in October of 99. And, um, and uh, Rob was freaked out because he was a Chop Top fan, as it turned out, from Chainsaw 2. And uh, we talked after the show, we talked in the green room. And uh, you know, it blew Rob's mind that I was the real Chop Top. You know, he said before he went out, he thought I had, you know, was doing a kind of a decent job as Chop Top. Like a cosplay? Yeah, thing. like a cosplay. And then, uh, you know, it turns out that I'm the real guy. <laughs> and uh, about a month later, his manager called me at home and said, Rob just got his uh, movie greenlit by Universal. It's called House of a Thousand Corpses. 
and he wants to know if you want to play a character called Otis Driftwood. And I said, uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. So they sent me a script. I mean, I, I just accepted Sight Unseen and sent me the script, and then I read the script and thought, you know, shit, man, that's a, that's a big part. Uh, so, um, you know, and I, I hung in there. They, uh, you know, uh, I, I think that if it had been any other director than Rob, I don't think I would have made the cut because I think Universal would have said we need somebody with a bigger popularity or a fan base or recognition, Q factor, whatever they call it. Uh, but because it was Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses, he was the star power. So he was able to hire me and, you know, certainly Karen Black is, you know, was like an Oscar nominee. Um, uh, you know, but, but Sid, you know, Dennis Fimple, a lot of, a lot of guys, uh, Tommy Tolles, Walton Goggins, who's gone on to, you know, a great career, um, Rain Wilson. You know, Chris Hardwick, I mean, all of these amazing, he had a great eye for talent. Uh, but I think that, that uh, thanks to his star power, Universal went along with his casting choices. And so, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, got the job of Otis, I, I held on to it, um, and um, did a good enough job so that uh, when House of a Thousand Corpses finally came out in 2003, uh, it did well enough at the box office so that um, the company that finally released it, Lionsgate, was uh, encouraged to do a sequel. And uh, that, of course, was uh, Devil's Rejects. Right. And uh, by then, you know, to this day, that's the only, that's the only role I've ever done twice. Hmm. Or at least in terms of a sequel, staying with the character. Uh, usually most of my parts are one and done, like Chop Top. I would have loved to have done another Chop Top. I, 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 I kind of feel that they yeah. should have done some type of spin-off with it. Something, but you know, you know, the problem was is that, that uh, Chainsaw 2 was Canon Films. Mm. And Canon Films then got, you know, went out of business, Golem and Globus, and then they went out of business and got bought up by something called Pathé. They went out of business, or they got bought up by uh, MGM. MGM then went out of business and got bought up by Sony. So, you know, there were so many different owners of uh, Texas Chainsaw 2 that I don't think there was really time to think about making another one. Right. Uh, you know, they've gone on to make, obviously, you know, four or five or six more Chainsaw movies, uh, including one that I was in, the Chainsaw 3D, that came out a couple years ago. Yes, I do remember that one. Um, but uh, yeah, no, no more Chop Top. No more but chop. Uh, so Otis was the only character I've ever really played twice, and I think the, the strength of Otis in, in Devil's Rejects was that um, a lot of times, with, especially with low-budget independent films, I'll get a part, uh, I'll read the script a bunch of times, but I'll fly in on a Thursday, I'll shoot Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then fly out Monday. So there really isn't a lot of time to uh, develop the character, get to know the character, and uh, so a lot of times it's just, you know, winging it, flying by the seat of my pants. Uh, with Otis in Devil's Rejects, I had already played the character, so I knew him pretty well. Uh, so as I like to say, House of a Thousand Corpses was like kind of uh, kicking the tires on Otis and Devil's Rejects was like taking him for a spin. And so that was very, it was, it was very comfortable. I didn't have to find the character because you know, I already had found it. Yeah, so, you found him the first yeah. time. So it was much more relaxed and coming totally in. Totally relaxed. I mean, I know what I'm doing, yep. bam, bam. I know what I'm doing. The relationships are relaxed with Sherry and Sid. Uh, you know, working with Rob was very relaxed. Yeah, when I interviewed uh, Sid back in 2010, he was telling me about how Rob and Sherry are very calm, very chill, very yep. chill people to hang out with. Yeah, that that don't judge them by their looks. Um, I did Malcolm McDowell, and he was like looking. He said he was looking for Rob Zombie, and he said he saw someone that looked like Charlie Manson. And he says that must be Rob Zombie. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. All right, so um, besides from the Texas Chainsaw, besides from, um, you know, Otis, um, what do you have in the works right now? Um, you know, not really much. I, uh, I just come out, I, I don't have any more copies of it, but I uh, just came out with um, uh, an EP uh, that I did with uh, Phil Anselmo. 
from Pantera. Uh, yeah, from Pantera, and it's uh, called Bill and Phil, Songs of Darkness and Despair. Oh, Another boy. happy effort. <laughs> and uh, that kid just came out on Housecore Records, so uh, that's part of my music career. Um, I used to uh, play, I had a band uh, called Corn Bugs with uh, good old uh, Buckethead, the world's greatest guitar player. And uh, I did Corn Bugs with Buckethead for, you know, about nine years. Um, so I have a, you know, kind of a music career too. Um, but uh, working with Phil was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I noticed that the other day when we were walking around our numerous times, you right. were wearing a Guar shirt, which yeah. that yeah. actually touched my heart because yep. I got to interview Dave Brocky. Right. Um, is there any significance behind it, or are you just a fan? Did you know well, Dave? Well, you know, I was a fan. Uh, I, I do, uh, you know, I, for many years I did a, uh, an annual horror con called Rock and Shock in uh, Worcester, Mass., in, the, uh, in October. And um, so for many years, the rock part of Rock and Shock, by day it was like a horror convention. By night there was a bunch of bands at a nearby cool old rock venue. And, uh, and Guar, Guar and uh, uh, ICP were like, you know, pretty much staples every year. <laughs> And so I became pals with, uh, with Guar, and then I did a, a TV series called Holliston with Adam Green. Adam Green. Adam Green, who did, uh, you know, the Hatchet movies and a bunch of things. And so I played a character called, uh, you know, uh, uh, Crazy Max, kind of like a Crazy Eddie character. Um, and uh, so, you know, and, and uh, Odorous was was uh, Adam Green's kind of spirit animal on that show. So I've, I've known them for a while, and uh, actually I was very happy for the fact that uh, that shirt I was wearing yesterday was a gift from Guar. So, oh, it was yeah. actually a personal gift. A personal gift, yes. Nice. So, uh, and my, uh, my older daughter and I have also been put through the meat grinder on stage with Guar, and I'm still trying to get some of the, you know, the red and the green dye out of my ears and stuff. Oh, so. their, their live performance yeah. Oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Just like Rob's live performance yeah. is amazing, yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, we're going to cut this a little short because I know you. you got a Great. busy day, yep. and it's been a long weekend for both yes, of us. Um, you were just telling me briefly that you were doing a movie with Tom Savini, and in the credits, they misspelled your name. Oh, yes, the, uh, the remake of Night of the Living Dead. Yes. Uh, I'm so glad to have all this turning into a show and tell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I played uh, oh yeah, Johnny uh, in uh, in Tom Savini's 1990 remake of Night of the Living Dead. It's the color remake. And um, yeah, that was uh, you know, it was it was it was a fun shoot. Uh, Tom is a great director. Um, and uh, I certainly enjoyed working with them. I think there were some problems in the, you know, in the production, and so I think George Romero kind of took over the reins of the production toward the end. Um, they did misspell my name in the credits. Uh, How did that make you feel when you saw that? You know, I just—it uh, was either—it just made me feel uh, a little. Uh, you know, it, it, what it does is it ends up kind of undermining my faith in the production that somebody, you know, didn't take the time to figure out how to spell my name. Especially I mean, being a George Romero film. Yeah, you know, or, but uh, so that, 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 didn't, that didn't rub me until I purred, let's put it that way. But, um, uh, you know, that's show business. Um, that happened once before, too. I did a movie called Crash and Burn with uh, Charlie Band. And uh, they also misspelled my name on that one. But I think actually, uh, you know, I, I ended up getting like 500 bucks from the Screen Actors Guild as some kind of, you know, penalty payment or something. Penalty but, uh, payment. Yeah, I know. That was great. I was very happy about that. Oh, excellent. Uh, but I'm not really that much of a stickler about this stuff. You know, I think that you really have to, in order to survive, um, you know, primarily the world of, you know, independent, low-budget independent horror filmmaking, uh, you really have to be pretty flexible, and uh, you know if you get all uptight about stuff, you know you're probably not going to last that long, right? Because there's all kinds of you know if if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. <laughs> so you really have to be able to kind of uh, you know flow with it to the best of your ability. And then final question: <laughs> uh, out of all the roles and everything that you've done, who are 
I know there's not one favorite that you've worked with before, but is there a few favorites? I know Kane is, is definitely one of them. Kane, I've, I've had a lot of fun working with Kane Hodder. Um, I had a great time on uh, on Repo and also um, uh, Repo for the most part, um, uh, working with uh, Ogre from uh, Skinny Puppy. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then 2001 Maniacs, Field of Screams, we teamed up again. That was fun. Uh, so I loved Ogre. Um, I ended up being on one of his albums called Devils in My Details. I did some spoken word on it, so that was great. Um, you know, I like working with uh, Patricia Tallman. I worked with her. She played uh, Barbara, yeah, you know, the ass-kicking Barbara in the remake of Night of the Living Dead. Uh, we also teamed up again. Um, well, she was in Army of Darkness, but we didn't have scenes together. And then we played a husband, ex-husband and wife in, uh, in a movie called uh, Dead Air, which was very cool. It's set in a radio station, zombie outbreak, uh, directed by uh, Corbin Burnson, speaking of TV, of L.A. Oh, wow. Law. And if you get a chance to see it, I, I really recommend Dead Air. That's, that's fun. That's an old school name yeah. I haven't heard in a yeah. long time. And, uh, Yes, I love working with Patty, um, and I just did a short yeah. film probably two months ago. Uh, I played Abraham Lincoln. It's a short film called Gingerbread, directed and written by Kendall Courtney Klein. Uh, like, young woman, very talented. Wow, what an amazing uh, script it was. And uh, I played Abraham Lincoln, and Mary Todd Lincoln was played by Amanda Plummer who was uh, really incredible. So I, I would love to work with her again. She was awesome, <laughs> really nice. fantastic. So, you know, I've been very lucky. Uh, I've worked with Clint Eastwood, you know, on a movie oh. called Pink Cadillac. Oh, that's you right, know. Pink Cadillac. I just had breakfast this morning with my old buddy, uh, James Remar, uh, you know, who's been in a bunch of things, The Warriors, you know, Sex in the City. I mean, he's all over the place. He's here in town actually doing uh, a TV series called Black Lightning that's just just, just come out, and um, you know he's a great guy. We met on the set of uh, White Fang, the Disney you know <laughs> boy and his dog movie with a young Ethan Hawke, and uh, we did that in I think 90, 90 or ninety one, and uh, James and I have been pals ever since. You know, oh, wow. so you know it's it's it's. It ends up being kind of a fun family. That's why I love the horror conventions too, because the you know fans, you get to the see fans are awesome. the fans are awesome, but you also get to hang out with some of your old horror pals that you haven't seen in years. And yeah, years. you know, like well, Tom Savini, like Doug Bradley, Kane, Sid Haig. I just love hanging out with him. You know, there's so many. Uh, Linda Blair has become a great friend. Yeah, you know, it's and it's Elvira. You know, <laughs> so it's so funny to see these. You know scary people but they're really a lot of fun to hang out with so uh you know i'm having a good time yeah i know like a lot of people see chop top where they see otis and they automatically portray you as a person that you're them but deep down you're far from that you're just playing that character well i am then in in la traffic <laughs> <laughs> a little otis can come up every once in a while yeah i'm a father of two you know very strong-willed girls, so you know, sometimes they channel chopped up. <laughs> They're more chopped up than I am. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, for the most part, it's fun to just uh, work it out on screen, get paid for it. And then when you go home, you don't really have to, you know, you're not bottled up and full of, you know, rage and, you know, monstrous thoughts and ideas because you've left it, you left it on the job. Yeah, it's kind of like going to a boxing thing and hitting yeah. on the thing. Yeah. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to cut this interview short, but he has a lot of work to do. This is the last day of the Days of the Dead in Atlanta, yeah. Georgia, uh, 2018, February 2nd through the 4th. This is Bill Mosley, Chop Top from yeah. Texas Chainsaw 2, and also Otis from Rob Zombie Movies, and other movies. You need to check them out. Yeah, go to imdb.com, Internet Movie Database, and there's my whole you know, 115 movies and shows and things. I know it's been a long and interesting career, I gotta say. You know, if you look at the table, you know, that's what I do. I spread all my stuff out and I look around and I go, damn, 
It's a lot Damn, of it's really a lot of work that? and it's a lot of you know a lot of crazy and and a lot of fun work. So for all you out there, uh, you know you can do this, you can have fun, you can make a living, and uh, you know be as weird as you want to be. So good luck. All right. <laughs> got a part in that movie at Chainsaw 2 and then uh, that I was living in New York at the time and that encouraged me to move to Hollywood and try acting as a career. Well, it was definitely a good, good move on your As it turns out, yeah, it wasn't, uh, it didn't happen overnight, but uh, yeah. So you got nothing better to do and uh, just enough money to pay the rent. Go try out Hollywood, you huh? stick around, yeah, yeah, you stick around long enough. Yeah. I never would have guessed that. I would have thought you were in it for like a long, long time. That's great. Go anytime I'm, I'm you want. from the Midwest. I, you know, that was not, uh, that didn't seem like a career option. I understand. You know what I'm saying? Location, yeah. Well, sir, it was very nice talking nice to you. Thank you so much for your time. It's All right. Great. Yes. That's all, folks. <laughs>